Are you frazzled, tired, and stressed beyond belief? Well, visit eastwesthealing.com forward slash stress reduction manifesto to download our free guide and learn three steps to nourish and flourish while helping you define exactly what you need to support yourself nutritionally, conquer stress, increase energy, and live the life that you desire. Alrighty, welcome everyone. This is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. And today we're going to talk about metabolism. Metabolism is such a, I don't know if it's a big word, but it's a common word that's used today by many lay people, by many practitioners. And a lot of the times I think at East West Healing and Performance between myself and my wife, we feel that most people have really no idea of what they're talking about when they say metabolism. Now, of course, we could go into greater detail and talk about oxidative metabolism or cellular respiration, which we've done in many videos, but today we're trying to simplify it. And we're really just talking about metabolism. And what is metabolism? It's actually a term referring to all biochemical reactions that occur within the cells of the human body. And essentially what we're talking about is the directors of, of every system in the body, the GI system, the immune system, the hormonal system. You have cells in every single tissue in your body. And as we've talked about, they're relying on many minerals like magnesium and copper, um, different enzymes that are stimulated by light. They are stimulated or we, sh we could say actually um, are facilitated by the use of glucose, which is stored in the liver as glycogen. At the same time, um, by the use of thyroid hormone, T3, which the liver actually converts using stored glycogen. And that is actually metabolism, and in a sense, we're producing energy, which is ATP, CO2, and water. So in a sense, we've talked about this in many YouTubes, but in a sense, in a general sense, metabolism is referring to all biochemical reactions that occur within the cell of the human body, which are happening in all your tissues and are highly influenced by minerals, glucose, and thyroid hormone. Now, by design, these reactions are designed to keep the cells functioning and, more importantly, essential to maintaining the living state of the body. The process of this system allows organisms to grow, reproduce, maintain our structure, repair damage, and rid the body of toxins. So it's really important to understand that our metabolism, or the state of our metabolism, how we live, how we manage our stressors, how we eat is essential to maintaining the living state of the body because our cells are in every single tissue. We're not saying eat right and live right to feed your GI system, to feed your immune system. We're saying live right and eat right, which is essential to maintain the living state of the body, the living state of your metabolism, the living state of your cells, which influence every single system in the body because the body is a system of systems. They're the directors of all the different systems and we've talked about this before. A simple example of this is the GI system. Now metabolism directly influences the efficiency of the GI system and the ability of the body to be nourished by the foods that we actually eat. So many times I've talked about this, the work of Hans Celier, and he showed that one of the first signs of having, we could say, a damaged metabolism or being in a sickened state would be lack of appetite. So when our cells are not producing energy, they're producing lactic acid, they're not using oxygen efficiently, they're not using glucose efficiently, maybe we're not storing glycogen, maybe we're not eating a good food frequency, the right foods, whatever it may be. We have too many stressors in our life that we're not managing, we're not getting in a good night's sleep, whatever it may be, the body's in a survival mode. And when the body's in survival mode, we're not regulating blood sugar, and we're producing inflammatory substances, we have an inefficient, we could say, inefficiency in our metabolism. And we're in the survival mode all day and we're running from a lion. We have to think about how our GI system reacts. Typically, it's been shown that the GI juices and pancreatic enzymes actually decrease by over 50%. Because when we're running from a lion and we're in the survival mode, we're not thinking about eating food. We're actually not thinking procreating anyway, and this is why people lose their libido. So if we live correctly, manage our stressors, and eat the right foods and the right frequencies and the right ratios, of course, the right foods that the body can actually break down, that provide our body with the resources so we don't have to break our body down, we actually begin producing energy, which directly influences the GI system, gets us out of this inflammatory state. So now the GI system can actually start you know, producing hydrochloric acid, 
and it's actually stimulated when we eat proteins. But if we're in this state and we're eating foods that aren't healing to our body or not regulating our blood sugar or not affecting our metabolism correctly, of course we're not going to be producing the necessary enzymes and juices to break down our foods, which in a sense is going to lead to a GI issue. You can eat all the GI, you know, you can go on all the GI diets that you want. The body's a system of systems. And the easiest way to affect all the systems in the body indirectly is to upregulate cellular energy or your metabolism, which, remember, is all the biochemical reactions that occur within the cells of the human body. Now, this is huge. Imagine if you could get away from trying to fix yourself with supplements, with labs, with all these crazy modalities that are out there. I'm not saying they don't have their place, but imagine if you could get away from that. You'd save money, time, your head would stop spinning. And what if you could actually learn to be with the process, be with food, enjoy eating again, and be with yourself through this process in a way, or live in a way, that supports your metabolism. What we're really saying here is allowing your body to actually do the work. We've talked about this before. And this is actually one of the tenets of osteopathy. The human body is an auto-regulated system. Now, what does that really mean? In short, it actually means it knows exactly how to be healthy. And as we tell clients, stay in your health and not your disease or not your symptoms. Try to be in your health as much as possible. Most people are staying in their disease or their symptoms. Our bodies have built in adaptive mechanisms at work constantly adjusting our internal systems based on the environmental stimuli. And this mechanism is actually referred to as homeostasis or balance. That's what it's all about. If you balance the way you live and the foods, you're going to balance your physiology. Homeostasis is required for optimal metabolism. And optimal metabolism is required to maintain homeostasis. A disruption in either negatively, negatively affects the other. So I'll say that again, which is human important, very important, sorry. Our bodies have a built-in adaptive mechanism that's always at work constantly adjusting our internal systems based on our environmental stimuli, which is homeostasis. Homeostasis is required for optimal metabolism, and optimal metabolism is required to maintain homeostasis. This is important because if we can balance the stresses in our life and begin to manage them and not let our life control us, and we begin to balance, not only eat the right foods the human body can break down, but we begin to balance our food frequencies to regulate blood sugar. We begin to balance our macronutrient ratios throughout each meal and the end of the day. We begin to manipulate our physiology, which is in a sense, manipulating and managing our metabolism. Now, of course, it's not that simple. The one thing that stands between you and your metabolism is stress. Of course, most people are brought into this life with homeostasis. That's in a perfect world. If we don't manage our life, we kind of push ourselves through the disease process into the pathophysiological phase. We start to see physiological changes. If we manage our life and our stressors and our foods, we can bounce back to homeostasis. If we don't, we move through the pathomorphological phase to the symptoms phase, to the disease phase, and of course, to death. Of course, we all have stressors, and stress forces the body away from homeostasis, basically into a state of compensation, many states of compensation. We've talked about one of them, gluconeogenesis, when the body's actually not storing glycogen, but it needs sugar to survive. The cells need it, your metabolism needs it. So it breaks down proteins from the liver and it breaks down fats from your tissue, which is a huge burden to the liver, and to cell energy metabolism. We're always going to have stressors. We're always going to be exposed to stressors. So in a sense, can we, can we ever be in a state of homeostasis? Maybe, maybe not. But we can assist our body. We can assist our metabolism in managing our stressors in our life and within our food and our emotional stresses, whatever it may be. We can manage these to maintain a state of relative stability and that's what life is all about it's not about perfection it's about management and adaptation 
Now, I think it's important to realize before we go here that the greatest defense mechanism, and it's a choice, you actually have to step up to the plate. The greatest defense mechanism we have against the environment, our stressors, etc., is the health of our metabolism. The healthier your metabolism is, the more empowered you are to actually take those steps to control life instead of life controlling you. And your health of your metabolism is dictated on how well you manage your nutritional practice, the food you're taking in. Are you eating enough? Are you malnourished? Are you absorbing in nutrients? Are you skipping meals? Are you not eating enough carbs, etc., etc.? So are you balancing your diet? Are you managing your daily stressors, your schedules? Are you giving yourself enough time, or time out, I should say? Are you doing things that you like, your hobbies? Of course you have stressors, but are you managing? Are you doing things to actually balance out those stressors? Or those stressors that are in your life, are you doing things to actually manage them so over time they don't become a stress? Are you working on your sleep habits? Are you doing things so you get a good night's sleep? Are you eating the right foods and regulating blood sugar so you get a good night's sleep? So there's many factors that come into play that strengthen our metabolism, which is our greatest defense mechanism we have against the environment. Many people don't understand this. Many people don't know this and many people don't realize this. And everyone's going towards all these crazy modalities, taking supplements. We see this every day. More labs, more supplements, more labs, more supplements. And you're moving further and further away from food. All these things, in a sense, are limiting your ability to thrive. Your approach to life, or this approach to life, has become the norm. And your body's in a constant state of adaptation, up and down, all around. Remember, it's not about perfection. It's about getting as close to homeostasis as we can and managing our life and our foods to maintain a relative state of stability. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you later.